Welcome to Drawing from the Collection Live. My name is Tiffany Wolfsmith. I am Assistant Curator of Education here at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. We'll be live every second Sunday of the month with a new visiting artist and a new project focusing on something from the permanent collection. Today, we're really excited to have joining us Fort Worth-based artist and educator, Dan Jian. Dan was born in Lichuan, China. She is a visual artist who works across painting, drawing, animation, and video. Dan received her BFA from the Tyler School of Art and from The Ohio State University. She earned her MFA with a minor in comparative studies. Uh, Dan's solo show and group work were exhibited nationally across the US and internationally in China and Italy. Dan's recent residencies include the Ragdale Foundation, the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center for the Arts, and the Vermont Studio Center. She currently lives in Fort Worth, Texas, where she maintains a studio practice and is an assistant professor of art at Texas Christian University. Dan currently has a solo show on view titled Edge of a Story at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center and it's up until June 26th. If you wanna check it out, their hours are nine to five, Monday through Saturday. Her other solo show is upcoming at TCU's Maudi Gallery um, and it opens in September. And Dan's animation will also be featured internationally at CICA Museum in Korea later this year. So she's a busy artist. We're really glad to have her joining us today. So hi, Dan, thanks for being here. Hi, Tiffany. I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. So Dan has chosen a very playful work from the Moderns Collection, William Baziotti's Sea Phantoms from 1952, which is currently on view in Gallery 2 on the Moderns ground floor. So Dan, tell us a little bit about what you like about William Baziotti's. Sure. William Baziotis was fascinated by mystical stories, and so am I. Although he was more of associated with abstract expressionist, his work stands out from the rest of the New York school because he prioritized shape and the placement in his work. Um, I'm very interested also in the symbolism, as well as the mysterious palette, that dark palette in his work. Yeah, that dark palette is in your work too, so I understand yeah. that connection you have. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about what you like about this painting in particular. Well, um, this work is very close to my current studio practice, which is um, all about clash and the cutouts. Um, in this work, the sea panthrums, it's all about the shape, composition, and the placement. Those are um, the primary concerns in collage work. On top of that, this work is both abstract and figurative. It suggests a narrative, yet it doesn't quite reveal it. Because of that, I'm really drawn to that kind of like ambiguous quality in this work. Mm -hmm. That mystery. Um, so we're really excited to see what project do you have for us today. What kind of materials do we need to get together? Um, sure. For today's webinar, you're going to need glue or adhesive dots. And you're going to need a pair of scissors, cutting knife, and a burnish tool, such as bone folder or credit card. You're also going to need um, clash material. I will use the vine charcoal dusted tracing paper. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you're going to need a drawing surface and drawing paper. Okay, cool. Well, um, we're going to turn uh, the spotlight over to Dan so we can work along real time with her. Uh, if you don't have your stuff, go run and get it and we'll get started. Okay, so first I will now show you the charcoal dusted paper that I'm gonna use today. 
Can everybody see okay? Um, Dan, I think uh, Sam's going to switch it to your hands because I think we've got your your face on. There you are. All right. I think everybody should be able to see now. You're good. Okay. Let's get started. So first, I want to show you the charcoal dusted paper I'm going to use. Recently, I'm starting to focus only on the texture and the value and trying to construct my image with only texture and the value. So with this workshop, I'm only gonna use those uh, charcoal dusted paper. And after that, I spray some fixative so they're not rubbing off. You can do that really easily just by rubbing some charcoal on top of any sort of paper. We, if you prefer not to do that, you can also use any magazine or newspaper that you might have. Here, I wanna show you a variety of work that I do with this method. It's just the ongoing exercise that I uh, do on a regular basis. And that's my method of keeping my hands moving and thinking about new compositions. So let's get started. So in today, in this workshop, I'm going to show you how to make this guy, a small bearded male figure. I took this picture a while ago. Um, don't remember when and where. So I have lost the context of this little figure. So in this web lot, I'm gonna reimagine him in a new kind of landscape and to see what he become through this cutout process. First, I cut a small piece of tracing paper and trace this guy. I trace the front and the back, but I'm just gonna use one side, perhaps the darker side. Get out one piece of those prepared clash surface. We're gonna cut out this fella, mainly his outline in choose a, choose a value. We're gonna cut out his outline and adhere it to a drawing surface. I'm gonna use this value. Got a little bit texture on it, which is what I like. So if you have prepared yourself one of those dry adhesive glue that, you only need to peel the top layer off, expose the glue. This is the glue coated and then you adhere. The value sheet on top of that. mission a few times. Now you have created this sticker and anything you cut out out there can be self-adhesive. With tracing paper, I'm transferring the out, out, outer contour of this figure. So I know where to cut.
using an exacto knife or scissors, cut out the outer contour of the small figure. After that, I'll show you how to render the different inner shape using cutout. Carefully find the edge, lift it up. Like what I said, the clash and cattle process is all about placement. So in this process, you can really play with different composition up and down. Um, William's work is abnormal because it is sort of like went against the traditional portraiture composition where the figure is rather on the side. I'm gonna do the same with my placement of this guy. With your burnish tool, Burnish it a few times so it stays nice and flat. Now he's very general right now and looking at the picture, I find him interesting because he has this funny beard that goes around and merge into his eyebrow. How funny is that? And that he also has those shadow, which gives him more of three-dimensional definition. So I only have a contour of my uh, figure. Now I'm gonna find a darker value and the cut out his beer and the shadow, the parts that it's you know darker in order to build him up. And now I'm only gonna um, transfer the shape that I want it to be dark. The part that it will get cut out that is a little bit of darker. If you have a light table, of course, you can just place this drawing directly underneath your tracing paper and cut up without making a transfer. You might not be able to see it, but I can see clearly um, if it's easier to make the transfer from the back side, you may do so. Just make sure the image is mirrored. With this one, I didn't put it on my glue pad. So now I'm going to put it on there, turn it into, again, a sticker.
gonna cut out his mouse. That's his beard. Tracing is not transferring very strongly. I'm just gonna reinforce my contour line with a softer pencil and try again. Much better. Working with exacto life or scissors, uh, your drawing line is not gonna be as precise as say a graphite pencil line. And I think that's why uh, that's a charm of working with clash material. The process itself, abstract, the handling of the artist to a certain extent, as a result, you will be able to focus a little bit more on the shape and the imagery. He's missing legs. Transfer his legs again. Or just the shadow. Cast the shadow from his tunic. value seems a little bit too light. If I glue this down, this top piece will just disappear with the bottom. So I would rather a darker, have a darker piece of shadow here. Do it again. If the drawing doesn't match uh, my cutout 100%, I go with it. It's much darker. Good enough.
his missing eyes. I want to bring up the contrast of his eye, so I'm going to use it even darker. Value for his eye. In this case, I'm just going to cut directly on top of my trees and paper. And cut through my glue sticker. Add his eye together. work directly on top of that I and render the detail a little bit. You can also freehand and just be okay with the result. Depends on how loose you want your cutout to be. Generally speaking, his eye was like a uh, spiral, trying to recreate that characteristic. Looking at this picture, Another thing that interests me is it appears that this figure is sticking his tongue out or um, you can interpret that he is wearing braces, of course, no braces at the period that this figure is coming from. Um, but I'm just gonna take artistic liberty and give him braces. First, I'm gonna create some squares that stands in for what I'm trying to do. And with a group hat, I'm gonna lift them up and line them up right here. in better value.
just to add to a comic quality to my drawing. Like what I said, this picture was taken so long ago, I have completely forgotten where and when. Um, so I'm, I want to create a new landscape for this fella and barricade a new sort of narrative, inventing a story. You can work however big or however small you want. Uh, in my practice, I like to think of this as compositional study. So when I get to a point that I like the general configuration of the visual element, that's where I stop. Clash is very um, versatile. So for instance, if I don't like the fact that he's standing in a stiff position, I want to make him a little bit more playful. I already started adding elements that's not there. So might as well go further. I'm going to make one of his leg kicking out. So detach this leg, lift it up. This is the advantage of working with dry adhesive glue that it's kind of repositional. You can move it around if you need. If you use school glue, you're not able to do that. So let's give him a ground for a landscape so this guy can be happy. Again, uh, take a piece of paper and adhere it to another sheet of glue that. Use a scrap of the previous one. Turning it into a sticker. Now draw on this sheet of paper directly, and I'm gonna give him a landscape that is full of iris. because Iris is blooming right now. It's Iris season. Starting to get 
build a garden around him. At any point, if you want the perspective to recede, appear as things are up, disappear as the landscape goes further, then you can change and use a lighter value. You will create effect as if the landscape is um, disappearing from you. Also, the size of the iris can get smaller. It's up to you, however you want to do, whether you want a very flat perspective, vertical perspective, like in William's painting, or you can create more of a naturalistic landscape by following rules for linear perspective. To speed up this process, I have pre-cut some iris motif. I'm just gonna add them into this guy's landscape. If an iris meant to be behind him, you can just remove the part that is overlapping. Notice the value gets darker as they come to the foreground and the value gets lighter as it recedes. and continue with this process forever. So I'm gonna stop right here. Like what I said, you can keep adding or uh, subtracting by cutting, cutting elements out and then lift it up. Um, for now, this is where I'm going to stop and just clean up the edges a little bit, remove some of those glue dots. Okay. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, workshop. Thanks, Dan. That was such a beautiful process. I hope, I, I bet it was new for a lot of people. Um, 
that technique is just incredible. So thanks, Dan, for joining us. Um, we'll be back next month on July 11th with artist Timothy Harding live again at 2 p.m.